<laughs> I'm Steph, this is my husband Pete, and this is our two-year-old son, Hayes. We were selected by Airbnb to travel the world for a year, calling a new destination home for a month at a time. Subscribe to follow along. It's our first morning in Athens. The first thing we like to do in any city is do a walking tour to try to get an orientation of the city and understanding of the history and understand also what we want to prioritize and try to check out while we're here. So that is what we're doing this morning. Okay. We'll have a long chase. We're on the walking tour. Our guide is Eleni. She explained that that's the second most popular name in Greek, the first being Maria. She also explained how people were named and baptized after their um, grandparents on each side. So all the cousins and all the grandparents have the same name. She referenced that scene in My Big Fat Greek Wedding where everyone's named Nick or Mickey. She also explained how um, the one religion here is Greek Orthodox and she said unlike the US where you don't talk about religion in school, here you have to pass your religion course to pass your grade. She actually was born in America but I guess she didn't grow up in the South. You might have noticed anytime you watch the Olympics on TV, whenever they make an announcement in the stadium, like now we will hear the national anthem of this country. All right, we just got to Pete's favorite part of the tour, all about the Olympics. We stopped at a building that was built for the Olympics in the 1800s, but we learned that they actually started a lot earlier in a town called Olympia. Uh, but then they stopped for a lot of years because they weren't Christian or something. They had to be religious and they weren't. And then anyways, um, some cousins revived it and built the building to support it. And the building was kind of the first Olympic village. And then in 2004, hosted the media center and some fencing. Now we are walking to the first Olympic stadium. We also learned that uh, instead of gold, silver, and bronze medals originally, you simply got an olive wreath on your head. You also got free food for a year. We're about to go see the only stadium in the world built entirely out of marble. We also learned why the name Marathon is Marathon. There was a town called Marathonis where the Persians tried to invade and the Athenians went to stop them and then ran back to Athens to declare victory. I think they said something along the lines of Naniki Komen, don't quote me on that, uh, but Niki means victory, like the shoe brand. Uh, Nike, as we Americans say. What do you call it? Oh, just Nike. Oh, so we're actually, my pronunciation is closer to the authentic name. Let the record show. Anyway, uh, the distance between Athe the point here where he declared victory and the town of Marathonis is the distance of a marathon, but we learned that that's actually not the case either because when the Olympics were in London, the Queen insisted that the marathon run by her, so added. 400 meters or something. Yes! <laughs> Okay, we learned a whole lot at that stop and I'm not even gonna try to summarize it. She gave us like a timeline of Greek history. She told us how Hellas is the name for Greek, Greece and Greek and, and why and all the different people that were here. Um, she told us why that guy on the horse statue looks Turkish. Uh, apparently when the Turks were here, Greek men weren't allowed to have facial hair so they could differentiate them. So when they left, they all grew a lot of facial hair and looked like that. Um, she gave us an explanation of horse monuments all over Europe, which I feel like we've had on a few of these walking tours, because apparently it's the same across the continent. If two feet are up, he died in battle. If two feet are down, I don't know. They won, they won the battle, yeah. No, the um, tail. If the tail's down, they won the battle. If the tail's up, they lost the battle. If two feet are up, he died during the battle. If they're down, he lived. And if one's down and one is up, uh, he got injured and died later. So. You can use that all across Europe to try to figure out what happened to the people in the monuments. And this is pro probably a good point to say we really encourage coming on this tour. 
because it's, uh, it's, been, do a lot it's been better, really great. <laughs> better, better job than me. front of the presidential palace we learned about the changing of the guards they are allowed to grow facial hair after 100 hours of service and to be one of the guards in front of the presidential palace is quite an honor you have to be a certain height you have to be pretty good looking among some other things what else did we learn Greece has a president and a prime minister right now it's a female president their first ever comment below if you think I'm good looking enough Eleni told us the story of Athena. Zeus had tons of children with multiple women. He wasn't faithful to his wife. And he received a prophecy one day that said, you know, don't have a kid with this woman. I forget her name. Somebody probably knows. I'll stick it here, I guess. Um, don't have a child with this person because what would happen to the child? I don't know, something bad would happen. Wow, this is, you should really just come to Athens and go on this tour. Anyway, he didn't listen, and when she became pregnant, he started to worry. Uh, she was immortal, but she was a shapeshifter, so she could turn into anything she wanted. So she, he was like, hey, turn into a fly. So she said, okay, Zeus. And when she turned into a fly, he ate the fly. And then, what? No, continue. And then um, he had a really bad headache one day, and he was feeling really sick. And then all of a sudden, oh, so he asked one of his sons, the goddess of fire or something, to split his head open. And when his head was split open, out came Athena, fully grown as an adult with her swords and armor. And that is why she's referred to as the goddess of wisdom, because she was born from Zeus's head. And you'll also see owls all around Athens, because owls represent wisdom as well. So we've come to the point of the tour, and this is a common theme on most free walking tours around the world that we've been on, uh, where they have a little section on bash the British, uh, which, you know, it's rightly so, uh, was always something that we've done wrong. Um, but I'll let Steph explain more about that now. Now, we just um, saw Hadrian's library and she was talking about some of the marbles from the Acropolis and how half of them are not here. They're in the British Museum in London and how it's still a controversy that they were taken from the original spot. They were taken when the Ottomans were here. Uh, and the Ottomans didn't care because it wasn't theirs. But then when Greece got independence, they said, hey, we'd kind of like those marbles back. And the Brits said, no thanks. And so it's still a controversy to this day that- Well, they say that they take better care of them, but just give them back. <laughs> yeah, apparently when you go to the British Museum, they have them, they give out pamphlets saying that they have more space for them and they take better care, but there is an Acropolis Museum built here in 2009, uh, which we plan on visiting, but she said if you go, you'll notice there's a lot of empty space because they're waiting on those marbles. But she also said, you know, if they give them back to the Greece, who else do they have to give back stuff to? They've got the Rosetta Stone, they've got the gems from India, all sorts of things, so. Join so. us for more Bash the British tours around the world, because it's pretty regular. That concludes our walking tour. Well, Eleni's walking tour of Athens. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know what that was. Oh, the final stop. We learned about the Acropolis. We learned that Acropolis uh, it gets confused with the Parthenon. Um, the Parthenon is the temple on top. Acropolis just means top of the city. Acro top, poly city. So the Acropolis refers to the one in Athens, it's the most famous. Uh, the tour guide asked where we were from. We said Tennessee. And she said, oh, uh, the only place with a life-size replica of the Parthenon. Um, so that was funny. Yeah, and it was a great tour. So we feel like we got a good introduction to Athens, but we'll keep you posted on Anything else we learn over the next month? Hi, welcome to our apartment here in Athens. Hey, are you gonna come with me? Hey, where are you going? Hey, hey, let's come back in. Let's come back inside. Oh. 
So, just arrived and let's uh, take a look. Down here is our lovely living space. Got a great couch, got some nice lighting, got these fun wicker baskets. Right, Hayes? Yeah. Uh, we've got a TV here and we have a really nice balcony out here. Yeah. Hayes, you gonna go and check that out? Can you come and help me? Let's go. Alright. So, it's an open plan. Obviously we've got the kitchen here, we've got a little breakfast, lunch, dinner set up here. Um, great little kitchen, all that we need. And, oh, really important. I found this. This is a little cabinet there for cleaning, cleaning supplies. So, uh, I'm very excited that they have a vacuum. Gonna be using that. Got a nice hat rack here. Can hang my hat. Or switch out a hat. I guess I can switch out hats. Let's do this hat for the rest of the tour. Didn't quite fit me, but there we go. All right, what's next? Let's do the master bedroom. Uh, this is where Stephanie and I are gonna stay. Um, I'm gonna call this the, the leopard. Talk about the argument we had. I'm gonna call the this the leopard room. So Stephanie thought that the beds were the same size. You'll see in a second. I personally think this is a bigger bed, so we should go with this one. Uh, but yeah, great, really nice size. Again, another little smaller balcony out here. Hey, do you want to show us? This is a. Like our Rome situation, we can say hi to the neighbors. Seems uh, where everyone hangs their laundry, so looks like I'll be doing the same thing. I really like this though. This, I just found this. Uh, it's a kind of an electric shutter that comes down, so that's very, very cool, in my opinion. All right, next up is the second bedroom. Uh, this is where we're going to have, Hayes is going to stay, he's going to be sleeping, this is the bed that I was talking about, which is definitely smaller than the other bed, but Stephanie thinks that they're exactly the same size, uh, she did measure it on her phone, um, I was right, uh, this one does have some really good storage though, and uh, this is where we're going to have hopefully some guests and some friends stay, um, Hayes what do you think, do you like this room? Yeah? Okay. Okay. Uh, and last up is the bathroom. Are you ready? Let's go see the bathroom. Whoa. So something we are all really excited about is a bathtub. Hayes has not had a bath in kind of about a month now. Uh, if not, then maybe a little longer. So this is a great bathroom. And then for all my... You gonna wash your hands in that? Yeah, good job. And brush your teeth. Are you gonna brush your teeth in that? Okay. But most important feature for me is the washing machine. Uh, I know it was it was very popular in our last video. Um, my routine of doing the washing. Uh, so you know we'll bring it back. I'll do some more. Um, and then here's the window out into the unknown. So. It's missing something. Uh-oh. What's it missing? What's it missing apart from he's breaking the toilet already? <laughs> it doesn't have a bidet. Oh no! Bidet with Hayes is not going to be a feature in this apartment. Um, but hopefully it'll come back. <laughs> I'm sure we'll find some other bidets around the place. Okay, Hayes. That's maybe not. That's maybe not. Yeah, that's it. Put it back. Good boy. Okay. Oh, okay. I got it. Okay, let's leave that though, yeah? Because we don't want to lose that. Okay, and, and that. That concludes the tour. Welcome to Athens. <laughs>